Bible talks about the mercy seat all through the Bible, that there's a seat of mercy. We have a job to do, and it's not our goal. It's the goal that God has given us, that we are the people that are supposed to prepare a mercy seat for our relatives. Not only for our relatives, but what about the people we don't know? God, we're building you a house for our loved ones to come. How shall they hear without a preacher? How will they know if not one person is sent? We weren't building a building. We were building a church where people's lives could be changed, that they had a point, a reference point to meet, a geographical location to attend. I mean, it's amazing what God can do when they ask God, God, help us. Would you please bring my husband, bring my daughter, bring my aunt, bring my cousin, and then build God a house. Here we are in Fairview Heights, Illinois. It's our third state day, but Craig, can you believe that today we get to go inside? We're not closing on the property yet, but you're about to see something you've never seen before. Let's do it. You know, I'm so excited just to get inside it's and think so that exciting. this is going to be ours. It it's really just is. really is Faith Church. And you know, right now in the heart for the house, we're talking about we're one house with many rooms. But this reminds me of the other rooms like Sunset, Earth City, Weldon, right? It has it's Ferguson. Got bones. They it's all, just... yeah, they all have that glass thing going on, which makes me know that God's going to do something like this in Florida. I just know He is. So I'm stoked about it. I know Nicole's going to show you. She's been meeting with architects and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to go get it set up in the auditorium or maybe even watch a movie. If you find any leftover popcorn, don't eat it. It's pretty old. You know, we'll go catch up with him in just a minute, but while he's away, the cat's gonna play. Let's see how we can make this place beautiful. And I know we can. You know, we've been dreaming and visioneering. You know, what about when you come into this beautiful lobby, all of a sudden, all the walls start turning white. What if there's some glass over here and you can see into a growth track room? Maybe there's some glass over here and there's a playground for kids. So you can come out up here and just walk up to this counter and say, oh, Portico team, I need my morning caffeine because we run on caffeine and Jesus on Sundays, right? And then we take our kiddos off to one side. We'll have student rooms for Rev Ministries. We'll have kids rooms. We'll have early childhood rooms. Speaking of early childhood, while we're coming over here, the Early Childhood Academy is going to be running in Illinois. The adults get to head off over here with Pastor David. And the pictures we've been showing you aren't real artist renderings. The important blueprints are the blueprints in our hearts. You see, y'all, we have a heart for the house. We have a heart for the community. We have a heart for God's house. So we're gonna build him a house. You know, the best part about Vision Weekend, as Nicole was just sharing, is the heart for the house. And when I say the heart for the house, it's the heart of God for our house, Faith Church. We are one house, that's kind of our logo, but many locations or many rooms. And when I look at this room and the hundreds of seats, and to think that we have five on the left side, come on, five years of grace and favor, and five on the right side, I just can't help but dream about the stories that you and I are going to hear about what God does in this very house. When I look at these beautiful seats, which by the way, on the front row, you know, in the theater, it's kind of like this. These are like brand new. They're beautiful. They just replaced these not long ago. But I was thinking about the people who live in this area and go with me on this. They're going to tell us this. Mark my word. We're going to hear testimonies on the screens in Florida and everywhere. I was driving down the road and the theater where I used to go try to watch the latest movie. I looked up and it was a church. And then they're going to tell us, I remember I went to theater number five and I sat in seat number nine. And it was there that I had just heard that my husband was leaving me or it was there in seat number 11 that I found out earlier that day that my child was getting a bad report. But then I came to Faith Church and I heard the word and I got saved and it was right here in this seat where I was in pain and, and it's this seat where God changed my life forever. And when I think about those stories, I reflect back. And the reason why I know about that is because a lot of us helped build Earth City. And people said, I remember when it was a big bar and I used to line dance there and get drunk to try to mask away my troubles. So if Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and God has taken his seat here today at all of our locations, you're in a special seat right now. And over the next four weeks leading up to our Jesus offering, we're going to ask God what He wants us to do to buy one of these seats for our neighbor. You might be sitting in Florida or somewhere saying, man, I'm, I don't even know anybody in Illinois. 
It doesn't matter what you're doing is you're sowing a seed, sowing a seat into the lives of someone else's family and God is going to bring the loved one that you're concerned about into the seat and the location where you desire. So I want you to pray about what God would have you to do for the Jesus offering on the 11th and 12th. Many times over the years, people have said, God spoke to me, give $1,000 or $5,000. Many people that can do more, they will do more, but I'm asking you to pray about that. So sacrificially, I need your help right now. Who's building churches in COVID? Faith Church. Who's taking third states? We are Faith Church. We've got a job to do. So this is it in our heart for the house weekend. I love it. I'm so excited. Stoked about it. I know we can do it on the Jesus offering. We can do it if we all do it together. You know, when I think about the house that I grew up in, not far from here, you in Florida this weekend, uh, about five minutes from here, I, I grew up on a street called Lincoln and my dad built a house. And I wanna talk about it next week a lot at Thanksgiving about building culture in the house. In fact, next week, we're gonna set this whole house on fire. We're gonna be singing, this house is on fire. Not literally, don't call the fire marshal, but we, we've got our ways. And so my dad put culture in us. And one of the things he taught us was that God's house was important. Everybody shout that with me. God's house is important. One more time. Come on, Florida. What is it? God's house is important. God's house is important. So my dad actually paid off his house in 22 months because he, he went inside of the house and he started taking off all the artwork. And back then there was a lot of Spanish artwork. Anybody remember the velvet pictures, right? Anybody ever seen the picture of Elvis playing pool with the dogs, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so my mom and I went to the grocery store. We came back and my dad had just had an impromptu Holy Ghost led garage sale. He took everything outside. My mom's like, what are you doing? He said, man, I'm selling everything so we can pay the house off because I have a heart for the house. He said, I'm going to build God a house. And so he went to the bank and after he paid it off in 22 months, he took the title deed to his house and went to 1416 Larkin Williams Road and built God a house. Then 18 years ago, and I know that because this weekend is my daughter's 18th birthday, and that's when I started Faith Church. So I took the foundation that my dad built, and I built Faith Church on that foundation of about 180 people. It wasn't a lot of people, but there were a lot of committed people. And there were people that had a heart for the house that helped my dad after he spent his own money to say, I'll build God a house. And then they just kind of existed, you know, for all those years, and they had a great church. But then when God called me, God called me to you in St. Louis and to Palm Beach County, and he said, there's a lot of people out there that need church the way you would do it, in ripped jeans, not pointing the finger at people this way, but this way, and we'd preach to the down and out and the up and out, and we'd build God a house. Come on, give God praise today. So I had a vision. In Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I always said, you know, you've heard me if you've been here at all, where there is no vision, people go to another parish. So we say it, spray it, wheel it, deal it, make you feel it, that God's house is the place where people get saved. Now, I want you to know that you don't get saved by going to church, but the likelihood of your life being changed at church is highly likely. At all of our campuses this weekend, you're sitting somewhere that was a sacrifice even in Florida. I was talking to my daughter today uh, a little bit about, you know, how you're getting ready to be an adult, 18, means you got to pay your own bills. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was talking about it. She said, I remember when I was like 13 and, and, and we were in Florida and all my friends were in St. Louis and she was unpacking that pain. I felt really bad. I remember she said, you know, I was there and all my friends were in St. Louis and you drug me to Florida. She wasn't griping, but there was a little bit of therapy in there. And I got to thinking about my family's sacrifice and she can remember the sacrifices that we made to go to Florida and living in two cities. Why? Because God taught my dad that life was not just about me, mine, and ours, but we were supposed to build the church of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise today. And that's what we did. So we had a vision. And this house has a tremendous vision, a vision of impacting people around the world. Watching on Faith TV today, live, all of South Africa. Watching on the VVOVN network and the Hillsong network and all the networks around the world. You watching on Facebook and online. Listen, we have 
tens of thousands of people out there, actually hundreds of thousands of people watching today because this house has a vision, but the vision has to be funded by you. In fact, you could, you could go to the store and if people ask you, what do you do for a living? You could say, I'm an underwriter. I underwrite churches and I underwrite, you know, building houses in Guatemala and I underwrite girls getting rescued for sex trafficking because at this house we do everything that I just said and much, much more because God wants his church to be the answer because it's clearly the system doesn't know what they're doing. Republicans, Democrats, I don't even know what the middle people, whatever they are. I'm just here to tell you that my, my hope is not founded upon any of the political systems because God's going to burn all that down. But what he's doing right now is rescuing humanity through your heart for his house, through television. Come on, somebody. Through outreach, through ministry to people. So the miracle is in the house. Everybody shout that with me. The miracle's in the house. Now, November the 26th, 2019. That's 103 weeks ago. I know that because I asked Google, how many weeks ago was it since November the 26th? And it said 103 weeks. Don't you thank God for Google? Let's just thank God for Google. Thank you for Google, God. Thank you for apps. Thank you for Amazon. Thank you for Amazon Prime, God. Thank you for Amazon now. Ha! But 103 weeks ago, in my prayer log, my journal, which by the way, I learned from my daddy's house. Well, the Bible said, teach and train your children in the way they should go. And he taught me to pray and that God would speak to my heart and he would lead me in the way that I should go. And he woke me up there at about five in the morning and I said, he, he asked me to drive over to Shiloh, Illinois. It was dark. I said in my prayer log, I'm actually reading in here. I thought I'm actually flying out later today. I would do it then, but God wouldn't stop wrestling with me. So I jumped in my car and I pulled over. And as soon as I came up to the first exit, in fact, I think they might have a Google map there. The first exit that I came to there was on uh, this side of the highway. I just screen recorded this because I'm so sophisticated on my phone. And I pulled into that parking lot. But right on the other side of the parking lot, if we're hunting Easter eggs, we're really getting hot here. I stopped there and there was a movie theater across the street that wasn't for sale. But 103 weeks ago, God knew that he was going to call us to build his house there. So he woke me up and led me there. And now he's leading. Somebody ought to shout amen. All of us there to this space and this place to make a difference in people's lives. Come on, somebody ought to give God some crazy praise. Yeah. It's kinda, God's kind of tricky like that because it says Shiloh, Illinois. And I was headed to Shiloh, which is past Fairview. But as soon as I was there. And those of you in West Palm will know this. Your, your street out in front of you today is Shiloh, which means meeting place with God. Had I not gone to Florida, I wouldn't know that Shiloh means meeting place with God. So God stirred me out of my house. Now I had to open the door and go outside and drive to it 103 weeks ago to a land I didn't know. And as soon as I was going, God said, no, it wasn't Shiloh. Check it out. He said, I was just tricking you to get you. I knew, I knew you wouldn't go to Fairview, but if I went to Shiloh, then I'd stopped you there. Notice this about your life today at all of our campuses, that sometimes here's a key ingredient for you. God will take you here to get you there. In other words, you might say, I don't know why I got this job. Because it didn't work out. It was to get you here so you could see there. But you would have never gotten to there if you hadn't got to here. So sometimes it looks like you made a wrong move, but God actually led you and said Shiloh when really it was Fairview. But if I hadn't I started heading to Shiloh, somebody, I'm preaching right now, then we wouldn't have got there. But when a vision, people perish. Now I made the vision clear. I told you guys 103 weeks ago what happened. Thank God some of you guys listened. Look at your neighbor and say, that's me. Look back at him saying, oh, he was talking about me. And I would, now our family goes on a vacation earlier this year. And somebody DMs me on Instagram. We're not even in America. And I got a DM that says, Pastor David, here's a picture of this movie theater. I was driving to work today and I saw them putting up this for sale sign. Why don't you give them a call? And I'm like, I don't know who you are, but I like you. And I called them. And when I called them, 
The Marcus Theaters had bought a bunch of theaters in St. Louis and Illinois. That particular one in Illinois, they had like one five minutes away. They didn't want it. It was their dollar show. It was an area that a lot of people even from East St. Louis were coming in and they had no interest in it. They said, we want to get rid of it. And I said, you know what? You guys got two choices. You can either have another movie theater come in and you don't want that or you can have a church. And guess what? They chose option number two. Come on, give it up for the kind people at Marcus Theaters. So keep going to Marcus Theaters, they're great. But again, here's my point, without a vision, people perish. But because I had shared the vision with you, that guy DM'd me, and then now I can share the vision with all of you. God had that guy drive by at that moment in history because today, in today's economy, we met with the, the architects. They said to buy that land today and with the price of metal and lumber to rebuild it. How many of y'all have noticed that's going up? It's actually $900 for a turkey. You ever notice that, that one? But because of the price of everything, they said right now to rebuild that building that you just saw would be right at, to buy the land to build a building, $20 million. And now we only need to raise $2.5 million to make up the gap because of what you've already given. Come on, somebody, and how you've already served. That's incredible. You say, well, who's going to give the other $2.5 million? It's you. That's why we're talking right now. We've actually got the money. It's just in your checkbook, but we're heading there vision. First Kings, uh, First Kings 8 verse 17. Check it out, Florida. It says, now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for your name, for the Lord, for the God of Israel. Notice we see heart for the heart house there. It was in his heart to build a house for the Lord. When I think over the years of all the lives that have been changed, not only your lives, but I think about the little kids who have been saved, let's leave it there. When I think about the abuse of people who have been beaten by their father, some of them in the room tonight, and today and tomorrow and all next week, every night, every day when we have church, we have moments to where people come in that have been abused and for the first time they come into faith church and they hear they're loved, they're accepted, they're chosen, they weren't a mistake, that they were born on purpose, with a purpose. That makes me so glad that we are a part of a church that has a heart for the house. So God has blessed this house to bless his house. God has blessed your house to bless his house. If I were and I could, and next week I am, I'm going to walk inside and kind of take you on a tour. And you can actually walk up the steps. And I'm going to go in that room over there and we're going to unpack that safe. Because in the safe is where we keep the things that mean a lot to us. When my dad passed away 18 years ago, we had the code to the safe. And me and my brother, and my mom, to keep it honest, we got in the safe. And it was there where he said, my brother, I'm going to take that gun. That was my dad's when he was a police officer. Uh, well, I, I want dad's watch. Could, 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 could I have his ring? And there was all of my dad's life work and possessions. The things that were valuable to him were in that safe. But really, it, it, to him, it really wasn't about the things that were in the safe. It was about not the possessions that were in the house. It was about the people and the persons and the purpose that he was called to. So everything he left to everybody else. My dad always told me, he said, David, don't worry about this stuff. When they're arguing about a car or arguing about this, you want the fruit. The root is what you want. They want the fruit. You want the root. You're called to preach. You're called to raise up a church. You're going to use what I built and you're going to do something absolutely crazy. My daddy would speak to me and he would say, I could drop you off in your underwear, totally just naked in the middle of Alabama with a Bible. And I, son, you would build a great church. So when he passed away, I knew what I was called to do. Come on, somebody. I knew what my father spoke over me. And my brothers got a bunch more fruit than I got. But guess what? I got the root and I'm excited that I got the root and I'm talking to you today you got the root give God praise you're blessed to be a blessing everybody shout I'm blessed to be a blessing come on Florida I know you're rowdy shout it again I'm blessed to be a blessing second Samuel 7 verse 2 says the king said to Nathan the prophet see now here's the question I dwell in a house of cedar this was a nice thing back then but the ark of God dwells in a tent. King Nathan said, wait a minute, prophet. It would be like somebody saying, Pastor David, I know I live in a big house. I live in a nice house, but I see that 
There's a lot of people dying and going to hell in Illinois, and they need a house. Actually, we're one house with many rooms. We have a bedroom, a living room, a bathroom. How many of y'all got an inside bathroom? Isn't that nice right there? Half of you. Let's try that again. How many of y'all don't go outside? So we got all these different rooms. And so Faith Church is just that. It's just a bunch of different rooms. And I can't help it, perhaps. In fact, God told me when I went to Florida, he said, you're not the guy that I called to go to Florida first, but you're the guy that obeyed. In other words, it kind of made me feel bad because I thought, hey, I wasn't your first choice, but I'll do. It's much like my relationship with Nicole. Can I get an amen? And she's like, <laughs> wasn't my first choice, but I, I, I guess you'll do. So we have to remember, like Nathan. Nathan said, man, I live in a good house. I have money in my safe. I got money in the bank. By the way, it's depreciating the cash you got at 3% a week, a year. So every, every year, Jeff Duncan with Duncan Financial over there, he'll tell you that your dollar, if it's $100 this year, it'll be probably $96 next year, and then it'll probably go to 91. Why? Because the Bible said, don't lay up treasures for yourself on earth because thieves, political, all kinds of thieves, financial, they come and they rob. But he said, when you actually make internal investments, there's an eternal return on investment, an E-R-O-I. So everything you do for God and his kingdom actually lives on beyond you. So my dad's fruit today is not his watch. It, it wasn't his ring. It wasn't his car. The fruit was the souls that are in heaven today because of what he did from our house. Somebody ought to shout amen. And you have that same opportunity today. And that's why this king was the king, because he was smart. Look at your neighbor and say, you look smart to me. So this king had a heart for the house. Now, in Psalms 127, verse 1, they'll put it on the screen, royal palm. Check this out. It says, unless the Lord builds the house. So in other words, you could build your own house. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder labor is in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. And we're seeing that right now, no matter what kind of disease that could be poured out, a guard can't fix you, the CDC can't fix you, politicians can't fix you. It goes back to that old song, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I do not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. On Christ, I pitched it high, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. It's not the Gaithers, but it's me. All of the ground is sinking sand. So your, your house, it has to be built upon the rock. So you can build a house, but then if you get divorced, it does you no good. You can build a house, but if your kids go crazy, it does no good. So that's why God said, the gates of hell would not prevail against my church or my house because God knew that he was the master builder that could fix it from the foundation all the way to the top and your life would not crumble apart because when you put God's house first, you prioritize his house. Come on, somebody. He prioritizes your house. Heart for the house. Everybody shout it. Heart for the house. Proverbs 24, verse 3. It's another good one. It says, by wisdom, a house is built. Or we could say by foolishness it's torn down. By wisdom a house is built and through understanding, you get that at church by the way, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare, beautiful treasures. So for those of you that are broke, God's actually saying, I actually want to bless you in your house. Not only get a house, but it'll be filled with rare, beautiful treasures. God wants to do that for you. But the priority, of course, needs to be him. Instead of the stuff, you're focusing on God's system, his operation, and establishing his church. And then when you make it happen for somebody else, God makes it happen for you. And he wants you to be blessed. I want people at our church to know that, because some people don't have any money, and some people have a lot of money. I was at a guy's house the other day at our church in Palm Beach, and he said, hey, this is a Rembrandt. This is a small one, but this is a Picasso. Like, my gosh. He's like, this stuff goes back to Louis the Fourteenth. I'm like, my stuff's going back to to Carroll House on the nineteenth, but I, I don't if you're in Florida you don't know. Carroll House is a local furniture store. But my point is is that I didn't come from a rich family. Maybe you didn't come from a wealthy family. I, I wouldn't know it if I saw it. I could go to a yard sale and be clueless. But I am telling you that God wants to so 
change your life and so change your family's life. And it begins when you bless God, who knows what God's gonna do? And for me, it's just about building the church. When I think about the five theaters, five years of grace and favor, five on one side, five on the other side, on five acres, I go, you gotta be kidding me. Are you telling me that 103 weeks ago, you had me drive within, like if we were doing Easter eggs, the Lord would say, you're hot, you're getting really hot. Remember that game when you were a little kid? You're cold, you're getting colder, and then, oh, you're getting warmer. You're, come on, raise your hand if you ever played a game when you were a kid. Some of you are so old, you're all thirty. you're just nodding right now. Remember Red Rover, Red Rover, send David over? Remember put your right foot in and your left foot out? You shake it all about. What if hokey pokey really was what made you turn around? What if that's the truth? But but my point is, is that God sees in our future and he sees and he says, I know the plans I have for you. They're for good and not for evil. So when we sow into God's house, God allows us to harvest back into our house. I was talking about some of the guys at our church. I was talking to one guy last week. We call this cryptocurrency. He said, Pastor David, I made $30,000 today. I said, teach me. Throw your pastor a bone. Talking to another guy at our church, moving and grooving over here. And he said, he started honoring God. And they were selling small houses and now God led him into commercial real estate. He sent me a picture of this huge high rise that they bought in the midst of COVID, in the midst of pandemic, God is showing a marked difference between the people that are in his house and the people that are in the house of Satan. Somebody ought to shout amen. This is the house that God has established to help his people. Second Chronicles 7 verse 15, it says, now my eyes will be open and my ears will be attentive to the prayers offered in this place. This is God's word. God's saying, hey, when you go to my house, When you pray prayers at my house, my ears are gonna be open. I have chosen and consecrated this temple or this house that my name will be there forever. And my eyes and my heart will always be there. If God has a heart for the house, you need to have a heart for the house. If God has a heart to help people, you need to have a heart to help people. 18 years ago when my dad died and I didn't know what to do and it was a sad day. He died on a Saturday and I preached on a Sunday. Preached on Sunday night, preached on Tuesday night. Had his funeral on Monday night in between that sandwich in there. But I knew the last thing my dad told me was, don't let them peel it out of your cold, dead hands. And guess what? They tried as hard as they could. A board tried, and family tried, and my mama tried, and every tribe. But guess what? If God puts you in the house, can't nobody burn it down? Nobody can shut it down. God says, I will lift it up. I have a heart for this house. Come on, somebody, and my name will be there forever. You don't know what it costs me to be me, but I'm here to tell you, it costs me everything, but I'm glad I did it. And if I had to do it all over again, I would do it again, and I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. Come on, give God praise today. You can be seated. Sit down with the rest of the heathens who didn't stand up at all the campuses. I can see you. I didn't mean it. No, I didn't. These are just people just starting trouble. Here's some quick wins. We're almost done. Faith Church wins in 2021. Salvations, we had 4,811 people get saved under this house. We had 347 baptisms happen. We had 1,752 dream teamers who served in this year alone. Come on, somebody. We added 813 new dream teamers, first time serving in 2021. We had 315 people go through growth track. We had 250 kids go through Rev Camp, our student camp. Our Shrev students served 2,241 students came to Rev. Our weekly attendance in 2021, it says 2,680 kids over that year. Local missions in Earth City, our food pantry, gave out 2,873 families have been fed. Sunset Hills, 2,207 people. Come on, give it up for this team, have been fed. That's a total of 5,080 people. Handing out snack packs in the city, which is kind of tough to do. 
It's amazing, the bureaucracy, I won't go political on you, but they really give you a hard time for feeding people. We've given out a thousand of those, handed out personally 200 coats we did, 250 blankets. Here's the kicker, we've, a lot of this we fund. So our partnership with Convo of Hope and our meals distributed with all the churches that joined up. What is that? Look at the numbers on this thing. What is this, 200 million meals, something like that? <laughs> Approximately year to date, 1.5 million people estimated viewers or face hurts online. Impressions over a million impressions. 185 territories, they're watching every week. We get, every week our campus pastor online talks about all the people that are watching all around the world, it's crazy. Talking about Papua New Guinea, talking about Switzerland, Africa, um, you know, uh, all over America. The Hillsong Network uh, with Nicole Crank show, a number of countries and territories. We're currently broadcasting that show every week multiple times to uh, approximately 200 uh, different territories. Uh, request for prayer through the Nicole Crank Show alone, which is helped funded by this ministry. 150,000 people have requested prayer through Nicole. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise for that. <laughs> through that, that network with Nicole's show, over 1,500 people got saved. To, ma- to, to make that real, you got a picture. 1,500 people are in heaven because of what we did. Our, uh, our work with uh, in Guatemala in 2021, we took trips over there. $85,000 worth of investment, built multiple homes over there. Uh, again, the, the life change is absolutely phenomenal. And so every week when you see just a few of those highlights that I just highlighted, every week when you see those things, know when you get to heaven, all of that is put to your account. Remember when the Bible says when you get to heaven, he's gonna say, well done, shout it with me, thy good and faithful servant. You don't want to get up there and knock on the door and he goes, who are you? You don't want to get up there and go, well, you want to go, well done, thy good and faithful servant. 